behind Mansell in the yellow Lotus Honda is Fenner. 43 laps. And it's go. They start on a bend here. Berger comes out. Fenner sprints through and ahead of PK up into second place. Beautiful start there. PK trying to drive round the outside of Senna. We had a terrific coming together last year. A cost got punted off. But it looks to me as though everybody is round and clear. It's Mansell leading, Senna second, PK third. Then the two Ferraris behind him as they go into the Eau Rouge and start the blindingly fast climb up through fifth and sixth gears to Le Radaillon, to Kemmel, where they're doing 200 miles an hour and more as they approach the highest point of the course. And this is it, Mansell, Senna, PK, beautiful start by the Brazilian in the yellow Lotus Honda with the Williams sandwiching him, then the two Ferraris who desperately want to do well here today because they haven't won a Grand Prix for 25 races, Germany 1985. And they're going much better here in Belgium than they did in either Imola or Brazil. The Ferraris are showing form again. But Mansell now, with a clear track ahead of him, on lap one, you can see the lead he's got over Senna, Piquet. Mansell in tremendous form in the four practice sessions. He was fastest in three of them, and already that looks like one of the Brabham's out to me. N or is it Elysia? Anyway, we'll, we'll have to check on that and let you know on our lap charts, but... Meantime, it is still Mansell leading. Senna second. Here's the replay. And here you see tremendous dart by Senna through a very small gap, but uh, he made it beautifully, got him up into second place. And that, this is the shot from the helicopter. And PK got a little bit wide there, being pushed by Senna. He was trying to take him on the outside. But it was a clean first corner, unlike last year. Well, there was actually a bump together between a Ligier and a Brabham in midfield, but here is Mansell completing the first lap with 42 to go. The man who won last year and was second in 1985, and already Cross is up. Cross is well up ahead of one of the Ferraris, and as they go through it, Mansell leading, Senna second, TK third, Berger. Alvaretto is fourth, Cross is in fifth place, then a long gap before Barbie and Benetton in trouble. Yes, it was uh, damage to the rear suspension of that uh, Benetton there. You see the left rear wheel is hanging all awry. And that looks like Terry Bootson, in fact. It is Bootson, and that, of course, great disappointment uh, to the local crowd here who've been very uh, enthusiastic, having uh, one of their own in the race and doing so well. So Bootson is out. He must have been a bit of a coming together there. So, oh! And that looks like a very nasty one indeed. One of the Tyrrells on the right. A car in the middle there with the whole... The race is bound to be stopped now. No doubt about that. They're both Tyrrells. It's Jonathan Palmer and Philippe Streff who are involved in a very nasty looking accident there. And I think it is Philippe Alio in the Lola. The, the three, three and a half litre cars and there is absolutely no doubt that on the second lap, third lap, now the race is going to be stopped. Well, it looks like all the drivers are out, but that looks a very nasty shunt. One car, though, is completely broken in half. And uh, poor Ken Tyrrell is not having a very good weekend. He flew all the way back to England yesterday to watch the cup final, because he's a lifelong Spurs supporter. And uh, that was a pretty disappointing day for him, as his... His main sponsor is a big uh, Coventry City supporter, so they sat together, but that wasn't a good day for Tyrrell, and now this is really disastrous for him. So there we are in the Ferrari pit. And Berger out of the car, as you can see. The race stopped on lap two, and there is the Tyrrell. That's Philippe Streb there on the right, the tall man in the red, white and blue helmets being taken back to the start in the car. You can see how strong the cars are. Philippe Streff completely unhurt. Looking for Jonathan Palmer. And there you can see the debris flying off. Obviously there must have been a coming together because Streff was in 23rd position on the grid and Palmer 24. There's the Frenchman getting out of the car. I have no news about Jonathan Palmer and I'll let you know as soon as I know myself. Yes. 
some 38 minutes after the original start, here is the second parade lap leading up to the second start. And the whole thing is being treated according to the FISA rules as though the original start and one and a half laps had never happened. There was uh, quite a frenzied atmosphere in the Williams pit after the warm-up when they changed the clutches on both Mansells and Piquet's Williams Hondas. On the left of your picture, pole position, Nigel Mansell. To the right in the front row, Nelson Piquet. Behind Mansell is Ayrton Senna. Behind Piquet is Berger. And it's the second time for go. Up to La Source and again, Senna sprints through past both of them. And the Brazilian leads this time with Nigel Mansell in second place, one of the Ferraris, and I think it was Berger in third position. Down the fourth place goes Piquet, down towards Eau Rouge, and it's Senna, Mansell, Piquet, Alvareto, and crossed up to fifth. Now, there was a bit of bumping at the back of the field then. I couldn't see who they were, but some, uh, a, a lump of car was flying around in the track, so right down at the back there was a bit of bumping and boring. Streff, however, is on his way up the climb after Eau Rouge towards Le Radaillon, up to the highest part of the course, Les Combes, which they approach at some 200 miles an hour. Senna leading, Mansell catching him, Piquet is third, Alvareto in the Ferrari is in fourth place, and behind Alvareto in fifth place, world champion Alain Prost who won in Brazil, second in the championship. Ayrton Senna in the active suspension Lotus Honda. The Brazilian won here in 1985. Yes, tremendous start by Ayrton Senna. He went for the same gap that he, that he saw in the pre previous start. Had to really squeeze and Mansell having a go, but he's on the outside line. Oh, and Senna's in trouble and he's taken them both off. Senna was on the slippery stuff on the inside. He's the wheels are digging in, he's not going to be able to move and that is naughty because Senna, I would say, was definitely the culprit there and he took Nigel Mansell out of the race. Sensation on lap one of the second start and now a joyful Nelson Piquet in the lead because Piquet, and look at this replay as Senna on the inside refused to give way and Mansell spins off. Yes, that was clearly Senna's fault. He was down the inside, he was on the dusty stuff and a bad mistake by Ayrton Senna there and that really is a continuation of his form last year. He cost himself any real chance for the championship, which he certainly had with uh, mistakes at several races, and now he's done it again. And that's very, very bad luck for Nigel Mansell. Now, Prost is up into third place. So both the Benettons are well up, and Mansell is back in the race. Nigel Mansell has rejoined, and it looks to me as though his car is perfectly okay. There's no reason why it shouldn't have been. He spun off into some loose stuff and has managed to get going again, whereas Ayrton Senna, with his rear wheel straddling for grip, clearly was not able to do so. And now, on the second lap, Nelson Piquet, desperately needing world championship points, leads the Ferrari of Michele Alboreto, Alain Prost, and there is Ayrton Senna retiring from the Belgian Grand Prix. Bitter goal for him. But uh, Nigel Mansell will probably think after the race that that's what the Brazilian deserved. And how right he's been. Yes, that's really, really cruel luck for Mansell. He was doing nothing wrong at all. And uh, Senna, for no good reason, put himself onto the slippery stuff and just slithered into, into Mansell.